Christina Eve and welcome back to my channel, Shine Strong, Live Long. Today I'm going to take you along with me on a photo shoot job that I did recently where my sole purpose was to distract my client's girlfriend long enough for him to have time to secretly get the family in place and get down on one knee to propose. In this video, I will show you how I troubleshooted, how I prepared for a rain or shine event with my camera, and how at the end of the photo shoot, everything worked together perfectly for the proposal. Here are five tips for photographers to make sure that your client is happy and that the proposal goes well. But before I get started, be sure to click on the subscribe button below as well as on the bell icon so that you receive post notifications when I post new videos. And let's get started. First things first, let me set the stage. So the photo shoot took place in a public area where it wasn't strange to see people moving around in the background and that's perfect for a surprise photo shoot when you are using family members. If you are trying to have the family pop in, you want movement of people in your peripheral to be expected so that when it happens, it doesn't make people want to look. Secondly, if you decide to do a proposal idea similar to what my client did, then you want to pick an outdoor location where there's a lot of versatility for photo shoots. Like I said, it was a 95% chance of rain. The blessing is the place that we did the shoot at had a gazebo. However, you know, it wasn't anything super special. It was just um, like a, a basic structure um, it was in a place to sit or anything there. It was nice, um, but if it rained and we had to do the entire photo shoot under the gazebo, um, you're gonna have to have some good shots in your back pocket, especially if uh, you're doing a photo shoot for like an hour or something. Um, yeah, you're gonna have to be creative with your space. I recommend always bring more than one lens but honestly, even with one lens, if you know what you're doing, then you can take a lot of really good photos in that one space. So today I'm shooting with my Canon Rebel T3i. It is my oldest camera. And I have a, as you can see, I have a jacket protecting my camera. It's, I bought it from B&H. Um, and the lens that I'm using is my 24, to 70 millimeter Canon zoom lens. I also have a protector over my lens. Um, it's my clear MRC nano protector, my black and white filter. Um, and it actually helps with haze because as you can imagine, it's pretty humid out here, um, but it um, eliminates the haze on my camera so it doesn't get like really foggy or anything like that. Um, my flash my external flash is outside of the camera um, of course if I step outside of the gazebo um, I will get my flash wet so I have this pocket on my rain jacket that is going to um, that I'm gonna throw my flash in if I have to step outside the gazebo third tip is to make sure that if no one else knows the plan for that day that you know it and your client know it and y'all are like right there in sync Oh, and it's always good to have an assistant nearby that could serve as a runner, just in case um, anything happens weird, any hiccups, um, they can run and, and get it done without being too distracting. My fourth tip is to always arrive to the place where you're doing the photo shoot at earlier than your client so that you have time to scope the area out and set your camera to the right setting because you will be shooting manual, right? Because you're a photographer. Okay, just making sure. The thing, you know, if your photographer is not shooting in manual, they're not a real photographer, okay? They just, they don't. They're not a professional photographer. All my professional photographer friends shoot in manual. So, I can do it quick, but just saying. It's always less stressful when you go early and you set it up. So here's what went down. Although I was prepared to take these photos in the rain, when we first started the photo shoot, the rain stopped. 
I needed to arrive early in this situation to make sure that I had my bearing straight. Um, I needed to make sure that my client's back was to the area that her family would be walking up to while I was taking those shots. And I knew that was about to be mid photo shoot time. So for the first 30, 40 minutes of the photo shoot, um, I had to make sure that they were someplace other than the place I needed to end up at. I picked three locations in the area that we were shooting at. I started in the location that was furthest away from the place I needed to stop at, but in all of my photo shoots, I love candids, so I got my clients to work their way up to that location. Um, so like, we kinda, so this is the location that uh, is furthest away. This is the one that's closest, and this is also like where we met at. So I get them started, I walk them to the furthest one away. Meanwhile, during the walk, I'm taking photos of them. We get there, I've maximized my time. It's just like my type A personality. Oh. So <laughs> we start, we took photos here, and then we worked our way back. Um, the good thing about taking photos on the way up, first, the background was so much better that way, on the way to the furthest location um, versus on the way back. I didn't like the background behind them on that end. So I wanted to make sure I get good photos on the way up so that on the way back, I don't have to try and reshoot like the same type of candid walking photos. Final tip is this. Maybe the most important tip of the day, make sure that you get the shot. This is when my background in shooting sports photography comes in handy. I'm trigger happy, I am. I shoot with a very high shutter speed. I get everything. Make sure that both subjects are in the frame when you're shooting a proposal. Um, Cause her reaction means nothing if you don't get the guy on one knee. So always make sure that you time it appropriately without being super suspicious, but that you have a lens that if you're far enough away, you can still get everything that you need. Um, and a decent quality photo. I always say like maybe shoot out and then work your way in. So her family was supposed to surprise her. So I thought it would be kind of cute to get her posing, um, not knowing the family's behind her, um, and then get the reaction that she has when she sees the family behind her um, before turning around to see him on one knee. That is what I envisioned. And it worked. It worked. If it didn't work, I wouldn't be making this video. Trust me. <laughs> Always remember when shooting events like this that the proposal is super important. It's important for your client, um, the client's girlfriend, um, and for the client's family. However, you make sure that you, as the photographer, you get what you were hired to get. So that shot is the shot that matters the most. For neither you nor the couple is that moment ever coming back, unless you take the photo. You are able to capture what those inside the photo can't see. You have the chance to capture these moments for their children. Don't accept the job unless you can deliver, period. Those are my five tips to make sure that your client is happy and that the proposal photo shoot goes very well. Thanks for watching. This was a super, super awesome day. I'm so happy that I was able to be a part of it. Um, they really enjoyed the pictures that I took. I'm so happy I was able to deliver. Um, and this is this was kind of one of my, I think it was maybe one of my favorite photo shoots in a while. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, I love to hear from you. I like feedback. Um, if you have any suggestions about other topics that I could cover that's similar to this one, be sure to leave a comment below. And remember that today is a new day, a day where you and I have been given the opportunity to choose better, love stronger, and shine brighter than the day before. Shine strong, live long.